Sip Sip Tuesday, here we go. Let's start with an informal greeting from me to you. What is happening? Hello, how do you do? Today we're back for another Sip Sip Tuesday because I cannot give up on these things. I have to do this and follow through. And we're just gonna jump right into it because I don't want to make this a long Sip Sip Tuesday because I'm super freaking hungry and I want to eat so I want to make this and then eat. Today, Sip Sip, I've got a kombucha, another kombucha, mint lemonade, organic brew doctor kombucha. And I have never tried this one, this brand brew doctor. I hear that it's good, so we're gonna see. And in case you wanna know, it's 100% raw, non-GMO, kosher, I think that's a kosher, I can't read that, and gluten free. So I say we pop, oh, I was gonna say pop open the top, but it's actually a twist off. Shall we do the honors? Oh, you have no idea how much that really hurt. All right, let's try this. Oh, that is sour. Oh, I don't know about you. I'm a huge fan of kombucha. Some of them taste more on the like, I guess you could call it the like yeasty side of things. I don't know. I just envision it being the yeast that tastes like that. And some taste more of like the whatever else they put in it. This one is more on the yeasty side of things. I like it. It's not super sweet or anything. It has six grams of sugar, so. I think if you don't really like anything that's not sweet, you probably won't like this at all. So, let us Google what we're gonna look up today. Should we do some more strange news? Okay, how about this one? Ninja Gorilla slips through electric fence, becomes a legend among the apes. Pizza restaurant closed after employees put laxatives on pies. <gasps> that's messed up. I would be so upset if that happened. That's a crappy thing to do. <laughs> you get it? It's a laxative. Crappy? Okay. Good job, David Moy. All right, so it sounds like one crappy meal. <laughs> a pizza restaurant in Springtown, Texas had to close this weekend after it was discovered that employees had put laxatives on at least one pie. That's a terrible thing to do. On Friday night, the Springtown Police Department got a call about possible food tampering at a Mr. Jim's Pizza location. Apparently, one of the employees poisoned up. Poisoned? <laughs> well, apparently one of the employees posted on social media that they were putting Miralax, a brand of laxatives, on pizzas, according to Dallas Fox affiliate KDFW TV. Authorities said three employees admitted putting the laxative on at least one pizza that ended up being eaten unknowingly by a co-worker. Ooh, that's not good. The employee who ate the pranked pizza got sick, but the people who made the pizza denied putting laxatives on any pizzas purchased by the public. The city's health inspector pulled the business health permit and shut down the restaurant until an inspection is scheduled for Monday. As soon, wait, as on Monday afternoon it remained unopened, police have not said whether any criminal charges will be filed. Mr. Jim's Pizza sent a statement to HuffPost saying that the employees who were involved in this prank have been terminated. Well, you shouldn't be putting no laxatives in no pizza. Laxatives do not belong on pizzas. We all know that. That's rule number one. Now, as far as the whole pineapple thing, well, I'll let you guys debate on that one because I don't really mind. Definitely, this is not one. There's, there should be no like. Does laxatives belong on pizza? No. Anyway, so that is that. Sounds like a crappy meal. I'm still giggling at that one internally. All right, back to some more strange news. Easter Bunny hops into a fight on streets of Orlando. Mm, no violence. What? Who spelled this wrong? Oh my god, <laughs> that's funny. Road crew gets failing grade after missing school in school. <laughs> oh wait, I I gotta go back to school. Road gets failing grade after misspelling school in school crossing. They put school. I love that people are just so funny because they're like, gets failing grade. Like, yeah, that you failed. You failed at that. What were they spelling? Spelling? Thinking while they were trying to spell. So this says, weird news. Instead of S-C-H-O-O-L, it was spelled S-C-O-H-O-L. <laughs> what the heck? Doral, Florida. A road crew in Florida should get an F for spelling. <laughs> I freaking love that shit. A motorist on Thursday spotted the error realizing the workers in Doro had made a mistake when painting the word school at a pedestrian crossing in the road instead of the correct spelling of school. I'm laughing because it reminded me of that movie Megamind with Megamind, I think that's his name. He's talking about school and he goes something something shul. I don't remember what it was, but it was so funny and it just reminded me of shul. I was given an opportunity to better myself through learning at a strange place called shul. WPLG brought it to the city's attention and the city tweeted that the private contractor has now corrected its work. It's not clear how long the mistake was there in plain sight. Can you imagine that motorist going and be like, huh, what is, what is a skull hole? 
Uh, this must be new. Well, I imagine that person call his wife and be like, hey, there's a new attraction in town. We gotta go figure it out. The school zone stripping was handled by the developer's contractors. They have been notified and are working expeditiously to correct. Thank you to all who brought this very important matter to our attention. <laughs> that was it? Well, there that is. Ooh, we should do this. We should view the hilarious grammar and spelling mistakes. In case you see a little sheep behind me, that is just Tiki. She's laying there. This is supposed to be hilarious grammar or something like that. This one says, you're the best teacher ever. What is so, f I don't get it. Oh, you're, instead of you are. That's not funny though. Dried apples. Get four or five items free. Incredible grilled cheese gluten free. These are not funny, I'm so disappointed. Breakfast, harsh brown potato, salt fish sausage. <laughs> no student drop off past this point. I don't get it. Yield two pets in crosswalk. This is just not, I just don't, this is not funny to me. I thought this was gonna be so much funnier, but I don't get it. All right, anyways, enough of the non-funny stuff. Let's move on to UPI.com. Thank you, HuffPost, for your services. Now let's go to odd news, UPI. North Carolina man collects 228 Ford leaf clovers in under two hours. Imagine the luck of that guy. I have not have been able to find one in so long. I don't even remember what they, I don't think that, I don't even know, I, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I would like to find one though. A North Carolina man said he set a new world record when he collected 228 four leaf clovers in under two hours, being the goal set by the Guinness World Records. Nice, congratulations to you, North Carolina man. Dang, that's crazy. My eyes like literally glaze over when I'm trying to find one four leaf clover. It's hard enough to find one. How could this guy have found 228? That is amazing, he better go play the lottery. Mom's mistake about child's age leads to 78,000 lottery jackpot. Ooh. We already know where that headed. Runaway cow jumps over pedestrian in Texas. I'm not so sure I'm gonna watch that. Skydiver reunited with a prosthetic leg lost in midair. Okay, these are not, these are not, I want something funny. Weird news, sky.com. Let's see what sky.com has to offer. Whatever, yeah, you can use my cookies. Gorillas appear to pose for selfie with a park ranger. <laughs> That's funny. He's like, yo, what's up, man? These gorillas pose better than I do. Indian man cuts off his finger in anger after voting for a wrong party. Sir, you didn't have to go that far. $10 charge for driving on the crookedest street in the world. What? What does that mean? Tourists to be charged for driving on the crookedest street in the world. The road, which also boasts gardens filled with hydrangeas and roses, has become one of San Francisco's top tourist attractions. Really? Oh, but it's so beautiful. The thousands of tourists who drive down San Francisco's famous Crooked Street each year could soon have to pay for the privilege. Of course, because everyone everywhere wants to make money. Every place has to make money. For a lot of things, it's not a bad thing. Local residents have long complained that Lombard Street, oh yeah, I heard that street, feels more like an overcrowded amusement park than a neighborhood thoroughfare. I could definitely understand that, like if you live there. It's like some people would be like, well, you live there, you should already kind of know. But then other people are like, it's expected of living there, especially because you picked that place to live. And then there's the other side of the argument where it's kind of like, oh yeah, I get it, because it's like, you live there, there's so many peeps, but I don't know. During the summer, an estimated 6,000 people a day visit the 600 foot long street. Now, city officials have announced a bill that would give San Francisco the authority to establish a toll and reservation system for the road in an effort to reduce crowds and traffic congestion. The fee, which could be up to $10, would be used to help sustain the reservation system, pay for more traffic control officers, increased police patrols in the area, tourism ambassadors. Well, I guess if you have safety also tied in there, that's good. Assemblyman Phil Ting, Phil Ting, who drafted the proposed legislation, said we must implement a system that enables both residents and visitors to enjoy the crookedest street in the world. The city needs state approval to charge people to use a public road, but it would be up to San Francisco officials to determine how and what to charge and how to use the funds. So that means you better go on the crookedest street in the world ASAP before they start charging if you don't want to pay $10, which I thought it was going to be a lot more. But then again, $10 to just drive through, I don't know. What do you think? All right, we'll look up one more. Let's try Fox News. Tree that began weeping on Good Friday. <gasps> what? It was weeping. The airline passenger who demanded restroom assistance died on vacation in Thailand. Oh, rest in peace to that poor sir. Zombie movie actor allegedly beat two women. That is not strange news. That's just fucked up. Five jailhouse romances that raised eyebrows. Japanese Science University professor taught students how to make ecstasy. 
What? Australian man gored to death by pet deer. <gasps> Wife critically injured. Oh my gosh, that's so sad. I hope they're okay. This is not, this is not strange news. This is just sad. Sad stuff. I don't want sad stuff. Okay, Daily Express. Let's see what Daily Express has. No, none of this is fun either. Is it not strange? They're not funny. LGBTQ news. Oh, barbecue food truck faces backlash for LGBTQ t-shirts. Let's see what this is all about. So I'm assuming this is the shirt. A Kentucky food truck is selling a t-shirt that says, I support LGBTQ. Liberty Guns Bible Trump Barbecue. Uh oh. I was about to say, oh cool, with the, I support LGBT, but then I got it. Super slow. Slower than a snail, but I got it. Uh oh, not good. Jamie Smith, owner of Bell Smoking Barbecue, drew criticism after he posted a photo of the t shirt on social media. LGBTQ commonly stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer, or questioning. Thank you very much. CNN. <laughs> Is this the man? <gasps> James Smith. How dare you? Wait, why do they call you Jamie over here? The post quickly went viral and generated outrage. Wearing that shirt is effing offensive. Williamstown, Kentucky resident Ariel Lewis told CNN affiliate WXIX or X1X. But here's the bottom line. It's not just a simple acronym. Facebook, user chat, Reynolds Rope. GLBTQ are already waking up every day with a mountain to climb in terms of acceptance. The last thing we need is a food truck mocking us. Um, I don't know what GLBTQ. Maybe they maybe they typed it too fast and they got it backwards. I don't know if that's supposed to be LGBTQ too. I mean, okay, you see see what happens when you start mixing up the letters. You get mixed up yourself. So now I can't even speak it. LGBTQ community. Others defended the shirt. I'll probably wear one or any of their shirts. These are great people and awesome food. People really should get over being so sensitive about everything. Wrote Facebook user Connie Thomas. Smith took the original post down and replaced it with the statement that said, "We apologize." as if we haven't offended any groups of people, organizations, or individuals with our shirts. We respect all beliefs and lifestyles and want no ill will towards anyone. Sometimes that's just a little too late. That's what they say. Is it too late to say sorry? Sometimes you just apologize when it's way too fucking late. Then you wish that you would have not done it when it's way too late. It always happens. But anyways, let's read on. Smith told CNN affiliate that he started selling the shirts two years ago and he will continue to sell them. He said he had already sold nearly 100 shirts before he posted about the shirt on a Facebook page. Smith told WXIX that despite the backlash, the shirts have now sold out and he has a waiting list. Dang. CNN reached out to Bell's Smoking Barbecue for a comment, but has not heard back. The food truck is based in Williamstown, Kentucky, but Smith takes Bell's Smoking Barbecue all over the state. After the post about his shirt went viral, he says he was uninvited from some events that the truck had previously been booked to attend. If this has offended anyone, that wasn't our intention. It was just a good play on words. Tell me what you think about that. I don't know, I think it goes hand in hand with like everybody's entitled to their own opinion and stuff like that, you know? So I don't really mix in with any of that. I just feel like, look, you can't make everybody happy, right? That's just the bottom line. You cannot make everybody happy. And if that's your goal in life and you just try to make every single person around you and in the world happy, you're gonna fail. It's not possible because every single person has a different mindset, a different thought process, a different this, a different that, and opinions. Every single one of us are entitled to our own opinions. And if we don't like something, we don't like something. If we do like something we do like that is nothing that you can force somebody to do and to make a change on that they have to have the change because they want to and you get me when stuff like that happens i think it's one thing to have an opinion it's another thing to scarf down your opinion down everybody else's throat and i just think that either you can turn away from the bullshit or you can stress yourself out by caring way too much over something that you could easily just turn away from depending on the situation of course but like i kind of see that kind of stuff and i'm just like well you know what i just kind of like it's kind of sad to see, but at the same time, like, it is what it is. People are going to be people, and some people are not going to be okay with it, and some people are. The sooner you accept that and know that and acknowledge it, and it's not directly affecting your life right here and right in this moment, like, this guy does not affect me in any way, so I'm not going to worry about him and what he's doing. You know, I'm going to more focus my attention on the people who actually do support. Because at the end of the day, for every single hater out there, there's, like, a ton more supporters out there. And I think that's what's important, and that's what's super, uber, duper, special, and positive. All in all, it's up to you whether you're going to let that affect you, or you're just going to continue on with your day. Well, we're never gonna really know what this person's real intention was and like again if it's not directly affecting you or somebody you love or whoever it could be then just let it go that's just for people that worry about it way too much because i know there's some of us that see these things and we're just like oh, we take it to heart but i've learned that it's so much more beneficial for your life to not take these things personally because there's many reasons why other people don't agree with it or don't like it i don't know a lot of people say a lot of us are way too sensitive nowadays and stuff like that and i don't mean a lot of us as an lgbtq plus community i just mean in general humankind 
am is a lot more sensitive nowadays. But a lot of shit fucking happens that makes us that way, you know what I mean? But I do agree with the whole thing of like, don't take it so personal. Because at the end of the day, people that have hate in their heart or any kind of poison or whatever it could be, most of them can bet your ass, most of them really just, they come from a place of their own judgment within themselves projected onto others. And they're fighting their own demons and their own problems and issues. And that's just the way that they take the weight off of themselves and just attack other people because they feel like shit inside. So that's why I just kind of feel more sympathy and empathy for people that have that kind of poison in their heart. That's why I would much rather just turn away from it and not give my time or attention to that and just focus on the love, the happy things, the positive things, the support. And I think that's a good rule of thumb though in your everyday life. Just don't take things too personal. Some people just live in their own world and I think that it's just best to just let them live their own world and let them have their own opinions and all that and try not to take it too too personal or, or give too much attention to it in your life because doing that could really affect your life negatively negatively and you don't deserve that you know you don't there's no need for that ain't nobody got time for that is what i'm trying to say so yeah but yeah anyway i don't know why i even got on that ramble but you get what i'm saying you know how i am i just go rambling all the time so yeah and yeah i think that will definitely conclude the sip sip tuesday thank you so much for joining me i want to say thank you to mr dr brew no not mr dr brew brew doctor i got it wrong already brew doctor mint lemonade for hanging out with me in this Sip Sip, if you are not following me already on my social medias and you want to just check me out in real time, they're on the screen or down below. If you like what you see, I invite you to follow me. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. And remember, if there's one thing that I want to call to mind, there are actually three. No matter the highs and lows, always be sure, always be certain to do good, be grateful, and stay humble. Bye.